nothing there for a second, were there? That's the way the spirit is. It's there, but you can't see it. The spirit of God. I want to talk to you about the secret moving of the spirit. It seems like God doesn't move. He's the same way every time. He's different in the manner of men. You would, like men who play the market, they get these certain things in place. <clears throat> and they move the same way every time. They can tell it's ready to invest. Moves this way, they can tell that it's ready to pull your money out. <clears throat> but with the Spirit of God, it's not like anything that men do. See, those, I, I bring it up, not like, not that God is anything like the market, but it's that the market is derived of the habits of men. Okay? See why I brought that up? Okay, so, but, the Spirit of God, it moves wherever, whenever, however, whithever. What it, I wish I knew what made the Spirit move. You know what, I've, I have fasted before and sought after God and prayed and God didn't move. And other times, like, like yesterday, <clears throat> okay, I preached a sermon just yesterday and uh, God moved. I, I'm telling you what, man, I thought I thought if I had gotten any closer that I would have to be standing in the throne room of God. I kid you not. God moved in such power, in such magnificent beauty, and in the way that He did things through me. You know, I, I studied a few days for this sermon, and I, I didn't really get anywhere. I told the I told the pastor, I, I, you know, and I told the people when I got up, I, I'm still not sure what I'm going to preach. And I got the verse out, and I never did get to read the verse. <laughs> it's uh, Isaiah 20, verse 3. But I never did get around to reading it. Because God began to move, and I didn't want to lose him. I didn't want to lose him, man. I, you know what? When God, when God speeds past you on a in, in a speeding chariot, man, jump on, jump on, get on that thing and ride it, man, to the end. Ride it to the forty minutes. I must have preached forty minutes, man, just as hard as I could preach. Man, I had fun. Man, I had fun. That was so good. That was so good. Some people say, I don't like when you go like this. Sorry. It's, it's hard for me to sit still when I feel in the Lord. Amen. So, no, no, we're going to come back here. <laughs> so, and, and I've seen God move in other situations. God used... He used a song one time, back years ago in the 1980s, during the Great Revival and that hit the United States. He, he moved in a, in a song in this one particular church. And nothing would happen until they started playing this song. But when those folks, with that one particular group, started singing that particular song every time, for months, it went on for months like this. And God moved. It, it, it seemed like, the man, the people, they would be shouting. Everybody was blessed. The church filled to capacity. Everybody was, was so wrapped up in the Spirit of God. And they just couldn't wait to get back into His presence again. They just couldn't wait to get back. They was addicted to God. You know what I'm saying? They was addicted to God. I said something like that at church 
uh, last night. Something about awestruck. I said I was awestruck with God's presence. And that's what he does to you, man. No man can do this. Listen, folks. <laughs> Not a man can do that. There isn't an ir uh, uh, inspirational speaker in the world that can mesmerize you the way the Spirit of God does. But you know what? Some people just, you know, they get used to it being there. Not like it was last night, but I'm saying they just get used to it showing up every once in a while. And they just kind of expect it and just kind of grow, you know, start moving with the sway like the water g moves in a river. And pretty soon instead of swimming up river, they're swimming down river. <laughs> you know what I mean? Look at Pastor said one time, any old dead fish can float downstream, but it takes a live one to swim upstream. Amen. You ever watch those fish? salmon they get up that waterfall but they, they move that little body so fast with with about 50 percent water base they shoot right up that fall I'm telling you what and in a force that's coming against them and a force that's coming against them and they've just they learn how to do they get they get in this in the thickest stream that they can and they go right up that thing <clears throat> if you're standing behind the waterfall you could just reach in and grab a fish every once in a while stick it in your basket <laughs> reach in and grab another one anyways and the spirit moves in that fashion the spirit moves in that fashion where he where he wants you know moving in whatever he desires to move in. There's a story about this. Listen to this. Nicodemus. Uh, Nicodemus is a ruler of the Jews. And he came to Jesus by night. And he said, Rabbi, our teacher, here's a professor of a university. No, it wasn't. <laughs> it was the equivalent today of a professor. I mean, those those guys really studied the word, okay? And he was a Pharisee. He studied the word, calling Jesus a teacher. Quite an honor for men to bestow upon the Lord Jesus, huh? <laughs> uh, and said he was from God. Admitted, okay? Because he said, no man can do these miracles except God be with him. And Jesus began to teach him. He said, truly, I say unto you, except you be born again, you will not see the kingdom of God. And he went on and began to teach Nicodemus of the spiritual things. Okay? And uh, Nicodemus, he didn't understand. He said, Can a man enter the second time in his mother's womb and be born again? Jesus said, Truly, I say unto you, except a man be born of the Spirit. He cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is of the flesh is flesh, and that which of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I have said to thee, you must be born again. Now listen to this part, okay? He says, the wind bloweth where it listeth. It's like that stream, you know? The stream flows here, the stream flows there, going over the waterfall. Wherever the stream decides to go, that's where it goes. Spirit is the same way. Okay? And depending on depending on a lot of different things, man, that's you know, that's what's happening for the day. Just like the wind. The wind bloweth where it wants. And uh hears a sound, but cannot tell where it comes or where it goes. So is everyone that is of the spirit of God. Amen. So is everyone. And Jesus being a ruler of the Jews, Jesus asked him, or Nicodemus asked Jesus, how can these things be? And Jesus said, thou art a master in Israel and knowest not these things? Don't feel bad, Nicodemus. 
there is a lot of people that just ain't getting it today as far as the Lord is concerned, as far as the Spirit of God goes, as far as the as the way the Spirit moves. You know, if men could figure out a one, two, three step, blam, here's the Spirit, they would be using the Spirit of God to gain money with. They would. They'd be using the Spirit of God. You know what Samson, look what Samson was doing. Samson was using that talent which God had placed within him to go out and do immoral things, to stir up the countryside. But God still used what he did. He used what he did as much as he could. But he would have done so much more greater. Who knows? Samson could have been another King David, maybe. Or one such as King David. You say, but David was a, was a king. Well, Samson was a judge. He was, he was, he sat in the place judging. He was a uh, in Moses' seat. He was the leader of Israel. He could have been another David. Uh, but but he chose rather to do to take those things that the Spirit of God would come upon him and he would jump up and start throwing stuff around, carrying ten ton gates to the uh, uh, the wooden gate so big it weighed tons and he would just through the Spirit of God he would he took a uh, jawbone of an ass and killed 10,000 men and uh, the Spirit of God would come upon him and 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 shake him and he would gain great strength but the, most of the time he was somewhere doing something he wasn't supposed to do but still God moved the Spirit of God still moved within him. And so you never, you don't know. You know, God chooses this time. The secret movings of God. Listen to this. Second Kings. Elijah was a man here. And he just got done running from uh, one of those most wicked women that ever lived. She was actually queen at the time, Ahab and Jezebel, king and queen over God's people. And she had threatened Elijah's life, and Elijah went and hid in a cave. And uh, the next day, the uh, the Lord came out and and was seeking for Elijah, and uh, a whole bunch of things began to happen. And let, well, let's just read a little bit of it right here, okay? I'm going to read you exactly what happened because it talks about the uh, Lord moving in a still small voice. And I love the way the King James says it, so we're going to read the King James. First uh, Kings 19, down about verse 12. I can get this thing rolling here. The Lord speaks to Elijah at Horeb. Verse 9, And he came there unto a cave, and lodged there. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him, and said to him, What doest thou here, Elijah? And he says, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts. For the children of Israel has forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thine altars, and slain the prophets with the sword, and I, even I only, am left, and they seek my life to take it away. You kind of feel like that. You're living in America today, don't you? I'm just about over. Okay, I'm just about over. And he said, Go forth and stand upon the mount uh, before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by. And a great strong wind rent the mountains and break it in pieces. Could you imagine that? A wind so strong it broke the mountains. It'd have to be, it had to be, 400 mile an hour winds to do that. And behold, the Lord passed in a great strong wind, break it in pieces. But the Lord was not in the wind. 
But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. And the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not. You would think, surely God come down and shake the place. He would be in some of this, you know. But after the fire, a still small voice. And it was so when Elijah heard it that he wrapped his face in the mantle and went out and stood in the entering of the cave. And behold, there came a voice unto him and said, What doest thou here, Elijah? And he says, I have been very jealous for the Lord of hosts because the children of Israel has forsaken the covenant, thrown down the altars and slain the prophets. And then he was saying all this. But see God chooses for what purpose at what time at what place at what cause he uses all we can do is continue to seek after God in the fashion in which he would move he picks the time he picks the place and surely I'm telling you as as sure as I'm sitting here as sure as you're looking God is getting ready not for man's cause not for the sake of the earth's cause but for the sake of his own word nothing we can do is going to stop it nothing we can do is going to cause it but because of his own word he is going to bring the most mighty reviving spirit spiritual movement that this world has ever seen amen all right god bless you thank you for joining we'll see you next time another great message crossing the middle ministry